All right. Here it is, paint for the Stormtrooper, the 73 Bronco. We did choose the Canyon Dusk Copper. So this is exciting. Before we can paint this truck, uh, today it's about, uh, well, I don't know what it is in the garage. It's probably 35 degrees in the garage. But outside, we're on our 10th day of snow and uh, the temperature is 22 degrees at two o'clock in the afternoon. So we gotta get the heater installed. So first you get uh, a couple of uh, brackets from uh, in the box. Uh, brackets are actually, uh, there's a three hole bracket and a five hole or six hole bracket. Six hole bracket goes in the front, three hole bracket goes in the back. We're pulling the face screws out on the, on the, uh, on the front fascia uh, and then these go right in place there so we can mount them up to the, the headers that I'm gonna put in the roof there. Because I like to recycle, I'm going to be using a, uh, a nice sturdy piece of uh, pallet wood here as my stringer on the ceiling. And we're going to go ahead and get that mounted up. So I got my stringers up on the ceiling here. I uh, did it, uh, I'm mounting up the unit equidistant between the uh, electrical box and the side entry door, which uh, is part of our code. Uh, that it has to be three foot from an electrical box three foot from an entry door so that puts it about right where it needs to be and then also um, uh, they put 32 inch stringers up here and uh, mounted them into the joists that are up in the ceiling uh, with some uh, pretty long live bolts and then I'm going to place uh, some eye bolts in here uh, and I'm going to attach my uh, my ratchet straps to these eye bolts Drape, drape it down enough to where I can lift that into the sling that I'm making here um, and then ratchet it the rest of the way up firmly up against uh, the stringer and then bolt it in and then it's up and ready to go. Per manufacturer's directions you want to have at least an inch from the ceiling to the top of the unit. This stringer is an inch and a quarter thick and then the hangers give an extra three quarters of an inch so it'll be, be two inches uh, between the two. Uh, and definitely more than eight foot off the floor, which is where uh, we want it to be. And then 18 inches from the back of the unit to the wall. Uh, and then I'm going to run a three foot um, exhaust, four inch exhaust, through the wall here and extend it out about 12 inches past the wall. And that's all per the directions uh, included in the box. I think it might actually be light enough to where I can get it up uh, to the top of the ladder and into the sling, that way I won't have to like unspool it and I can get it all the way sucked up and, and bolted in and everything would be fine. So I think that's, we're, we're going to try that and see what happens. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, got those two home. There. Now I'm going to lift it up. Now I want you to do, do you have gloves on? I want yeah. you to grab the unit and then as I'm pushing up, just keep it from sliding one way or the other. That's what I'm... This, this thing's been pushed. I can push it up though. That's not What if you tip me over? I won't, the whole tip, you, thing I won't tip you over. I won't tip you over. Okay? You ready? Are you sure? Nope, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure. But we're going for it. Alright, we got it and it's holding. So now we're going to inch it up until we can get it all the way up to the top and we're going to bolt it in. All right, now we have six points of contact. Just in case, you never know, right? You never, you never know.
bit better. So I've got four legs holding in the stringers, four legs holding in the unit. Um, this unit only probably weighs about 60 pounds, 60, 70 pounds, something like that. So I think that's going to be more than enough. All right, that was a, so that was step one. We got her installed. Let's go ahead and get the straps off. On day two or three, uh, I don't really remember at this point. Now that we've got the heater hung, we're going to uh, wire it, which is gonna be pretty easy because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put an appliance cord from the outlet that's in the ceiling that also powers the uh, overhead door uh, to the back of the unit there. It's a three wire system. This unit only pulls six amps. So um, that's on a 15 amp breaker. These are rarely used except for going up and down and in the winter, I'm probably not gonna open them at all. So I think the circuit will be fine for this, for this unit. You've got three wires there, your standard green, black, and white and you're just gonna wire those into standard appliance cord, uh, which, has the, uh, which has the same ends on it there. So I'm gonna wire that up, put some wire nuts on it. That'll be good. Then on to wiring the thermostat. I'm gonna put in my Mr. Heater uh, thermostat. Went ahead and ordered it with the unit, even though it was kind of expensive, 30 bucks for a analog um, thermostat, but this will get me started, and then I might go to Wi-Fi later or something like that. But um, anyway, uh, 35 degree to 75 degree range, so that'll get me where I need to go. And then I'm going to mount it right up on the wall right here, next to the uh, garage door openers. Go straight through the ceiling right next to that Audi symbol right there. I'm going to go up and over in the garage and then drop it right down on top of the heater where I'm gonna hook it up so that we can get the uh, thermostat set up. So let's go do that. And now to wire our box, it's a lot easier for me to do it on the, uh, on the desk here. So open the box, mounting screws. Um, I'm gonna squeeze the front, pull it off. Uh, there's a couple of slots on the back here to pull the wires through. Okay, and the red's gonna go on the left side, white's gonna go through the right side. And we're gonna take a pair of needle nose pliers and hook the ends of these wires. And when you're screwing them tight, make sure the hook is facing in the direction of the turn. All right, so that's basic install there, and we'll mount it to the wall. We're gonna place this thing right about there, right next to the light switch, so I can just pop in, set the thermostat, take off for a little bit, come back to a nice warm garage. That should uh, take care of the installation on, on this side. Put my cover back on, we'll go up and wire into the unit and see what happens. Right next to where the uh, power comes in, you have your thermostat right there. We're only using a two-wire thermostat because we don't have a fan-only thermostat. White wire goes with W, red wire goes with R. And there we are, all buttoned up, ready to go. Now let's go over here and test it. We just plugged in the unit. We'll see if uh, all the hard work paid off. And there you are. So we have a working unit. Now we just have to plumb it with some uh, with some some gas. So that's what I'm going to work on now. So I ran the gas line from the basement through this crawl space into the garage, and came down the wall to a to a drip leg. So I have some drip leg there just in case we need to clean it out for some reason. And then all the way up where it's going to terminate and then there's going to be a flex line that will go to the heater right there this is a three-quarter inch pipe 
one of the items that I bought at the uh, Home Depot here is a pressure gauge which will actually allow me to place air in uh, the Schrader valve here uh, bring this line up to 14 pounds of pressure or whatever pounds you want I brought it up to 14 pounds and then uh, you can test to see if there are any leaks in the new line that you just ran and uh, as you can see here in this one this has been sitting for almost an hour and a half now and it is exactly where it started so I have 14 pounds of pressure in there no leaks the actual line pressure is going to be half a PSI so this is uh, extremely overkill to test the pressure so I'm feeling really good about this line this little gem was $14.99 if you look at the national fuel gas code regulations it will uh, has a chart you input how many feet you're running also the distance that it is to your meter uh, and it will tell you what line size you need to use for your area and uh, minus three quarter inch so uh, at least going to this appliance it was three quarter inch so I ran three quarter inch I ran uh, 55 feet of three quarter inch pipe there'll be a short flex hose from uh, here to there small flex hose and that flex hose was specifically designed for uh, furnaces so it, it is uh, it's got a one-way valve in it so if the line gets severed because of something hits it or something like that uh, it will uh, shut the gas off uh, there and it won't leak out uh, so I highly recommend that now we need to vent it I haven't uh, finished the, the actual gas plumbing yet it has a four inch exhaust so the exhaust that uh, they want from Mr. Heater uh, was about uh, 200 and 200 250 bucks something like that went to Home Depot and picked up a uh, this is the piece that's going to the four inch uh, adapter that actually goes on to the back of the vent here uh, so this part's going to go on the back of the vent and then this part right here has these little lock tabs built into it and it's actually going to lock right into this right here and then there are tabs on it on the actual pipe that actually punch in to keep this from separating um, and it creates a seal uh, this is a 36 inch pipe so I'm uh, to the code with this 36 inch pipe um, and uh, we're gonna saw a big hole and let's jam it through also uh, you need a thimble to go through the uh, to go through the wall and a thimble is a uh, basically a metal sandwich that uh, the pipe can go through so that the pipe is actually sitting on metal and not sitting on wall um, and that it also creates a little bit of an air gap around it so that heat can dissipate away from the pipe and not hit the materials uh, my, uh, in fact, the date codes on these items at my Home Depot were from uh, 2017. So they, they don't sell much of this, and because of that, they didn't have all the pieces. So I had to basically make my own stuff in some cases. The wall thimble they didn't have, so I'm building a wall thimble out of parts and pieces. Uh, that'll get me one inch around um, the actual vent pipe, and then pressed against the wall so I can screw it in and seal it as well. Uh, and it'll work as a thimble and give me the uh, uh, the space around that I need. All right, we're gonna get this thing turned on to 65. Let's come over here. If this thing kicks on so that green light blinking like that means that it's working correctly we've got the heater on here in a second you should hear the piezos or you, you should hear the ignition turn on there it is gas flowing and then the ignition should stop perfect gas is flowing look like any problem there. Vent is running. Starting to get warm on the uh, on the tube. We 
Okay, I'm gonna call that a success. Pretty cold this morning. Started out at 23 degrees outside. The garage was at about 39 degrees. Um, so we're gonna let that run for a little bit and see how long it takes the garage to get to about 60 degrees. Um, we have a lot of metal in this garage. So metal, metal, metal. All that metal is at 39 degrees. And uh, it's, it's so as the heater is moving the air across these cars, it's gonna be cooling it off. So um, once we get the metal up to temperature, I think it, it'll quickly go to 60 degrees, or at least I hope. I finally got the hood down. But we've been running this heater now for uh, right at 45 minutes. Uh, the garage started at about 37 degrees this morning. And uh, after 45 minutes, we're at 50, about 53 degrees. So uh, 45 minutes up to 53 degrees. Um, yeah, I would, I would probably take that. Let's add that project up right now. So I purchased an 80,000 BTU unit. Uh, that unit I found cheapest at Northern Tool. Uh, this being the beginning of March now, I checked Northern Tool in there actually out of them now. So uh, maybe they'll have them again at some point, but they had them on sale for 394. Uh, the unit list price on this was 599. Um, I did find it quite a few places for 599, uh, but if you look hard enough, you'll find it for uh, you know, under 500. Um, but anyway, so I paid 394.99 thermostat. I overpaid for this. I paid 37.99 for an analog thermostat. I should have gotten a programmable one, uh, but I didn't, and uh, so that's what I have. Uh, shipping. Uh, I ended up getting shipping for free because I bought the membership. So if you look at the membership, Northern Tool has a membership, and you get free shipping on a lot of things. So, you know, it saves $10 and because uh, the shipping was $50.99, the membership was $40. So I saved $10 and I got a membership. I don't know how much I'll use it, but, uh, you know, it saved 10 bucks. The tax for where I live was $22.21. That made the total unit, including shipping, $494.18. Uh, then in order to get the thing hung, keep in mind I showed you that most of the uh, wood and uh, hardware that I used was all stuff that I had already had because I'm a pack rat. Uh, so all that was free. I ended up having to buy a spool, a 100 foot spool of thermostat wire, which was $12 at uh, Home Depot. Uh, also at Home Depot, I had to buy 55 foot of three quarter inch gas pipe, plus all of the uh, couplers, uh, 90 degree elbows, the valve, and uh, the pressure tester. Um, all of that came to about 225. It wasn't expensive at all. Um, and then uh, you know there was also some uh, some you know I had to get pipe sealant and things like that. But you know all of that came to maybe 10 or 15 dollars. Uh, I ended up buying two pipe wrenches because I, I I didn't have any pipe wrenches. Found those for eight dollars a piece at Harbor Freight, and uh, Harbor Freight those worked awesome. They were totally sharp. Didn't have any problems with them slipping. They're easy to adjust. Uh, I highly recommend the the cheapest ones they had at Harbor Freight. So total in all for this heater to start working and heating the garage was seven forty seven eighteen. Uh, what I didn't put in there was the price that's going to cost me to insulate the garage. Uh, and that is going to be about $800, and that is to get the ceiling and the walls to code. Um, and uh, so it's going to be about $800. So, uh, But if you already have an insulated garage or if you don't care about insulating your garage, uh, you can do it for around $800 for an 80,000 BTU natural gas heater. And by the way, that does come with a conversion to uh, propane. And to wrap up this video, it's been a little bit short of two hours. Uh, remember, outside temperature this morning was 23 degrees. Inside temperature in the garage um, at about six foot was uh, uh, 38 degrees, something like that. Um, I've had the heater running now for two hours. We're at about 63 degrees, so about 63. The actual thermostat is showing closer to 70. Um, so we're gonna pull out the handy uh, Ames tool and we're at 60 almost 65 degrees now on the paint on the truck 67 on the top 
62 on the tunnel, 65. So that's paintable right there. So two hours, um, and this is gonna be in really good shape. But if you have any specific questions about any of the installation that I didn't show you, hit me on the email address. I will absolutely tell you what I did, and uh, uh, I hope you guys good luck, have a good time. That is a wrap for my point three garage. Uh, next, we're gonna be prepping this Bronco for paint. Let's get this thing done. Woo! Nice and toasty.